Hey guys, Michael Level here, and I just wanted to go live to talk with you about submitting to Christ. Uh, this is a word that's just really in my heart to share with you, uh, so I wanted to go live uh, just to release this word and hopefully encourage you as this encourages me. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to wait and see if anybody else is going to jump on here and join me live. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to get started. As you jump on, uh, just let me know where you're watching from, wave at me, say hello. I just want to know and see where you're watching from. If you would just wave at me and say hello. <laughs> but I hope everybody's having a good Tuesday. Cindy, it looks like Cindy's watching. Hey, Cindy. Anybody else, I just would love to know and see where you're watching from and say hello. And then I'm going to get into this word here that I want to share with you. Short and simple. And sweet and to the point. <laughs> Let me see. Just say hello, whoever's jumping on here. <clears throat> now I'm going to get started here in a minute. All right, as you're jumping on, to say hi and welcome, and I'm glad you're here. I want to talk to you about submitting to Christ today. Uh, I just believe that this is a really vital thing. As a disciple, it's a, it's a vital thing for our church, especially the Western church right now. I believe that we're in a very significant hour in our world with so many things going on, and uh, God's really looking at our heart's response. As uh, a mentor of our families would always say, the issue is never the issue, but it's your heart in the situation. That's the issue, your heart, the heart of the matter. And I really believe right now, in the Western Church, God is really looking at our heart and our response in the midst of a lot of these things that are going on in our world. And uh, this is the time to submit to Christ, to walk in submission to Him as our Lord and our King. Um, look, you cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you're not submitted to Him. Uh, it's impossible to uh, really embrace the discipleship process, to really walk with Him and be conformed into His image to really put him on and really uh, you know, surrender to him in a yielded life without submission. It just will not happen. Where there is not submission, uh, there is no, there's not that lordship and there's not that uh, conforming and surrendering to his image and his, his likeness. It just won't happen. So to be a disciple, we must live submitted to Christ. We must live to submitted to him as our head. And I can show you this in a few passages of scripture, scripture right here in Ephesians 5 and James 4. In Ephesians 5, verse 22 to 24, this is what it says, guys. It says, Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church, he himself being the Savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be to their husbands in everything. Okay, so you're probably wondering, wait a minute, why are you talking about marriage here? Why are you talking about a husband and wife? Look, Paul related to uh, the, the relationship between a husband and a wife in the context of Christ in the bride, Christ in the church. We are his bride and he is our bridegroom. And I think, you know, right here it clearly says, I was reading this the other day and it really leapt out to me. We must submit to Christ, be subject to him and submit to him because he is our husband. He is the head of the church. We are not the head of the church. He is. Pastors and shepherds are not the head of the church. He is. Uh, we, we, don't, we aren't allowed to, be set to create our own preference or our own opinions of doctrine and what we want the church to be, what we want our life to look like, what we want church to look like, what we want ministry to look like. No, it is the church of Christ. It is the ministry of Christ. And we must be subject to him is our husband and is our head. James 4, if you jump over there, guys, James 4, verse 7, it says this, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So there's this thing, area of when we submit to God, we resist the devil and he flees. But when we're not submitted to God, there's an openness of literally just the enemy, the, the evil one, uh, to just have his way in our life and in our world. 
uh, because we live going our own way. It's 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 like my way or the highway is kind of what we what we adapt to. Of you know, I'm an independent person. And I want to do life my way, and I want to do Christianity my way. I want to do Christianity the way that traditions have taught me, uh, because you know this is the right way. But I, I what I want to tell you is that like we need to get back to the basics of the gospel. We are God's calling us back to the simplicity of discipleship, the simplicity of really letting Jesus be the king and the Lord that he's supposed to be. It's like, maybe he could do a really good job at this. Maybe he can do a really amazing job at uh, growing and building the church and uh, just reaching our world. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that he can because he's the head. It's his job. He brings the nourishing life into the body. He cherishes and admonishes us as a husband to his wife. Uh, this is his job. He loves to do this. And what if we as leaders, I'm speaking specifically to leaders, as leaders and shepherds, what if we got out of the way and let him be the shepherd and what, let him actually be the head and stop leading people unto ourselves and, and actually start leading people unto him? Like it's time for us to get out of the way, guys. It's time for leaders to humble themselves and to literally step step aside and let the king of glory come in. To step aside, yes, God has given you authority, but I'm telling you, we've been abusing and using our authority to build up our own ministries and to build up our own ways of doing things in the way that we see fit. But guys, God is looking for leaders and shepherds, and I believe that he's raising them up right now all over the Western world. Uh, that will be shepherds that will have his heart like David and they're going to lead people to the king and they're going to shepherd pe- they're going to lead people to the great shepherd and they will not they will lead people to not know the voice of a stranger but to know the voice of the shepherd and this is guys the ultimate assignment of a leader or, or, or of a disciple is to be a follower of Jesus guys we're all disciples of Jesus I'm a disciple of Jesus I don't have this thing figured out I'm on a journey of discovery, of being a lifelong learner of Christ. I, I, my life mission is to be conformed into the image of my Jesus, to look like him, to put him farther on, to be clothed with Christ and to make no provision for the flesh. So I need to know the shepherd. I must know his voice. Ultimately, like, yes, there's authority and there's leadership in our life. But if that leadership isn't leading you to the great shepherd and leading you to the head, then I question what that leadership, what what it, that leadership's motivation really is. Guys, we're not called to lead people unto ourselves. We're not called to lead people unto our ministry and unto the way we like to do church. We're called to lead people to Jesus and to make disciples. He's the shepherd and we are his disciples. We are his sheep. Um, so this is just a big deal, guys. This is like in God's heart, I believe, right now. And for you, your personal life, for my personal life, I'm like saying for me, like I really, I'm sharing what the Lord's convicting me with. And I believe that this is true for each and every one of us at an individual micro level, but also at a macro level as the church as a whole. I really strongly believe that, you know, and, and this is a strong word, but you you know, I love the church, guys. I love the bride. I'm a part of it. And, and I, so anything that I say today, I know that I've been the contributor of, and I've also been the receiver of. But guys, I don't think, guys, it's time for us to submit to God. Like in the, in the Western church, we've been such, uh, we've been so defiant and just kind of living our own way and doing Christianity the way we want to do it and doing ministry the way we want to do it and thinking that we know better and writing our books and having all of our bestseller things and having all of our conferences with all of our speakers. Guys, I've written books. Guys, I go out and speak. But enough is enough. Like It's time for us to rise up into maturity as disciples and really submit to Christ as the head. Um, it doesn't matter uh, who your you know what what your preference is of what some minister you're following or ministry you're following or your favorite book that you've read are we staying in the word of God guys like are we staying in here and are we staying submitted to Christ is our head because ultimately again he is the one that we're following I am a follower of Jesus I'm not a follower of Christianity I'm not a follower of a certain book or a certain ministry or a certain stream or flavor I am a follower of Jesus and I believe that you are too. And, the, and we're called to go on this together. We don't have the answers, but we can humbly submit to him and let him lead us by the hand, okay? Um, jump over with me. Uh, uh, if you remember, there's, there's so many passages that we could really jump into. But do you remember Saul uh, in 1 Samuel 15, I believe it is? And Saul, 
he King Saul, by the way, I'm talking about King Saul. And uh, do you remember the story? This is the kind of the story of all of Saul's life. But there was a, a particular time where he was instructed by the prophet Samuel to uh, destroy everything. He was sent by God, like it, he and by Samuel, like it was okay. Like yeah, you can go to battle, and he went to battle. But Samuel said, "Hey, destroy everything. Don't leave anything alive." And Saul went out with his army, and they destroyed everything but the good sheep and the good animals to make a sacrifice for God. Oh, let's keep the really perfect ones. This is this is awesome. God's going to really like this. He's going to love what we're doing. We're going to keep a bunch of this sheep and uh, we're going to sacrifice th them for him and we're going to worship him together uh, with our sacrifice. And uh, then suddenly, guys, this is the time that God rejected Saul. And Samuel, God spoke to Samuel and said, Saul, or Samuel, I have rejected Saul. Go speak to him. And Samuel comes to Saul and he says this. This is the phrase I want you to remember. He says, to obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Guys, when we are outside of submission with Christ, we live in constant presumption. We have all these, we make all these assumptions and presumptions about what we think Christ really wants, what the Lord really wants. Like, and we build based on tradition based on the presumption of what we think is holy, what we think is spiritual, rather than building upon just that yielded obedience and submission to Christ. Like building on what is he actually speaking? What does he actually desire? You know? And we, we fall into presumption. This is what we fall into, guys. And like, it, this isn't how it should be. God wants us to live yielded to him. I can't tell you like how many times, and I've done this in my own life, it's like we read the latest book and it's like, maybe it's a five keys on like fasting. You have to fast to get breakthrough. So then we all start fasting because we think that what worked for that guy is going to work for your life. Or, you know, hey, this guy, he prays, you know, out this many hours every day. So if I pray that many hours every day, I'll have the same spiritual results. Or this guy really worships hard and he does this kind of worship. If I do that kind of worship, then I'm going to have, guys, it's so formulaic. We've, we've made our, our Christianity such a formulaic thing of principles and keys. And if I do this, that, and the other, if I, if I sacrifice the same way that that minister does, I'm going to have the same kind of spiritual results. But guys, the same word stands today for you and me. To obey is better than sacrifice. God doesn't care. It's like, hey, maybe I told that person to fast 40 days, but did I tell you to fast 40 days? Maybe I told you to literally just, you know, get off some sort of social media, or maybe I told you to change up something that you're eating, like, or maybe I didn't tell you to do anything. Maybe I told you just to sit and be still and just to rest in me and not do a thing, not, not even be moved or motivated by anything that you see other Christians doing. It's time for us to obey the shepherd. It's time for us to submit to him and really just lean into his voice and not make that sin of presumption like what Saul made. Guys, we think that we're experts. I know I'm, I'm speaking really like uh, courageous here, but I'm just speaking from my own life. Guys, I've been a pastor in a church. I've been in ministry. I'm, I know I'm young, but I've been in ministry for over 10 years, 12, 13 years. And I know that like I can, I've fallen into that sin of presumption because I just go into autopilot mode of what all the latest uh, powerful charismatic books are telling me to do, what, all, what, what ministry is telling me to do, what tradition tells me to do. But enough is enough. It's time for us to be led by the Spirit of God. It's time for us to obey and not just give all this spiritual sacrifice. God doesn't delight in our religious act sacrifice, our religious busyness and endless just, you know, chugging along on a treadmill thinking that we're making God really happy because we're doing all this cool stuff. And God's like, what are you doing? To obey is better than sacrifice. I just want to be in a relationship with you and submit to me and let me guide you. For far too long in the church, guys, and I'm again, I am the church. I'm speaking. I, I've been in leadership and in ministry for 12 years. So it's like in the church for too long, we've literally been the ones at the helm steering the ship. We think that we're the ones that know better. We know best. If we're really honest, we would say, you know, I know best. You know, God's way in the Bible and how things were in Acts and how things, how Jesus did things and how he went away for hours into the secret place, you know, and how he just, instead of reaching, uh, you know, getting all caught up in the masses, he just invested in 12 people and they flipped the world upside down. You know, that, that model doesn't really work for today. That's cool then, but we know better now. We have all these books and we have these experts and we, that we know how to do ministry really good. 
Um, guys, no, let's submit to Jesus. He knows best. He's the King and Lord of us. And he knows best for the church. He knows best for your own life. Uh, for t too long, we've been building and asking him to bless rather than just going and linking up to what he's already building. He's the leader. He's the shepherd. We must follow him. We're disciples. We're learners. He is our master. We're called to follow Jesus every step, every millisecond. It's not, obedience is not uh, the ele an elemental beginning thing that you need to get down and then you can just graduate where you just can chug along. No, obedience of the Spirit of God being led by Him is something that's never to leave us. That if We begin the same way, we, we continue the same way, and we end the same way. Uh, I never want to reach a place, guys, that where I, I, you know, something started through God, and then I'm just, and then, and then I'm just starting to just maintain it and chug along, going through the motions of what I think uh, He wants of me. I want to, you know, that's what happened to Saul. He started out by God, and then began to just presume what God desired. But I want to, every moment, every breath, be led by Jesus and let Him be the shepherd and just submit my life to Him, obey Him. Um, Guys, remember Jesus in the garden in Luke 22? I'm not going to turn there, but remember in Luke 22, verse 39 through 46? Uh, hey, man, greetings from Pakistan. I'm so glad you're watching. In, uh, in Luke 22, 39 through 46, it says this. It says Jesus is in the garden. This is right before his crucifixion. And he's in the garden, and it literally says that he tells his disciples to pray so that they would not be led into temptation. And then he stumbles a little farther and he gets on his knees and he begins to pray and pray and just and turn his attention, turn his affection to God. And he says this, not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. And then an angel came and strengthened him. And then from there we know he prayed some more, but from there we know he went and he did his father's will. He did it. He obeyed unto death. And he was crucified on a cross. And three days later, he did rise from the dead and he's alive today. But he obeyed. He was obedient unto death. And this is, guys, there's something in here for us. We can see, you know, how submission, what it's meant to look like. John 14, 15, Jesus said this, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. So we can't say we love God if we don't obey him. This is just truth, guys. This is straight truth right here. John 8, 31 through 32, he said, Remain in my word. If you remain in my word, you will be my disciple, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Guys, how are we disciples if we remain in his word? How can we love God? How do we know that we love God? What is the measure of how, how can we practically, tangibly measure our love for God? Is it how many services we attend? Is it you know, doing the right Christian stuff or reading books or, you know, re reading the right things or going to all the different conferences. No, it's obeying. If you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will obey me. If you remain in my word, you'll be my disciple. Guys, and then we see Jesus where he prayed. He went into prayer. He was still, he trusted and he leaned upon God and he was not led him to the temptation. He literally overcame the temptation to to uh, run from the cross uh, because he remained in prayer. And guys, this is what submission looks like. It has to get practical. It looks like praying and it looks like obeying. It looks like hearing and it looks like doing. It looks like you hear the word and then you do the word. It looks like living a life of prayer and then going and releasing what you, what you learn in the secret place. And this is the journey that we all are on, guys. I, I, I don't have it totally figured out. I, 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 I don't have it all put together. But what I can say is that this is the journey that we need to be set on as disciples of Jesus is to submit to him, which is to pray and to obey. And guys, prayer, it's so crucial. Like not, not praying is like it shows that you don't value him. When we don't pray, it communicates that we don't trust him. When we don't pray, it communicates that that we know better. It communicates that we can figure this out on our own because prayer is that vital intimacy and connection and communion with God. Uh, we're constantly in contact and relationship with Him. We're in union with Him, mystically united to Him in every form and fashion. But if we don't have that time of literally praying and, and seeking His word and seeking His will and seeking His way, then, then 
I would I would assume that we we must think that we know better. We must think that we can do it without him because we we need him. We must be praying. Jesus prayed, we need to pray. He said, pray that you would not be led into temptation. And then lastly, he didn't just pray, but he obeyed, guys. He was obedient. And this is the going and the taking action. So in prayer, we lean into the Lord and we lean not on our own understanding, but we acknowledge him in all our ways and he will direct our path. And then when we obey, it's that we get up and we actually go and do what we what he commanded us to do. We go and we obey what the word says, what the, he commands us to do in here, what he, what we f- hear and, and discern in, the, in that place of prayer with him. Uh, it's not good to just be a hearer. We want to be a doer. We want to be obedient, obedient to follow him in every way. Um, so lastly, I just want to say this statement. We avoid the sin of presumption like Saul when we sit at the feet of the master, when we're in prayer just like Jesus in the garden, and when we simply obey from that place of prayer, uh, we avoid that presumption. We lean in utter, utter and constant dependence upon him. This is submission, guys. This is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, to walk submitted to him. And I want to live, I want I want this, guys. Like I want this for all of us. I want this for you watching. God, there's such a higher life for us to live, to be conformed into the image of Jesus, into, into his likeness. There's a higher life for you and me to live, that we wouldn't just be, uh, members of a church, and we wouldn't just be attenders of a service, but we would be disciples and followers of Jesus. That we would literally walk what the way He walks, talk the way He talks, and literally obey Him because we love Him. Guys, it again, it, it doesn't. I, it, I don't. It's hard for us to believe. Like you wonder the world why the world thinks we're hypocrites because we attend services, but we and we say that we love God, but we don't obey what He tells us to obey. Love your enemy. I mean, pray for those who persecute you. Don't gossip or slander. I mean, literally, if if somebody you know makes you do something, you, if you if somebody slaps you on this cheek, give them the other cheek. Like, literally, living to lay down your life to serve others. Um, it's possible. This is what God wants to release in our in the church, guys. Because I'm telling you, I'm I'm all over the place right now. But I'm just this is a word from the Lord, and I'm feeling so stirred about this. Is the, I'm telling you guys, church is not a service we attend. It's a group of disciples that are on mission together. And, and for too long, again, we've defined, we've been the ones defining church. We've said, we know what best, we know what church is, uh, you know, and the church will no longer be allowed to define the church. This is a prophetic word that my dad's been releasing for the last 15, 20 years, that the church will no longer be allowed to define the church. Jesus will define the church. It is his church. We can no longer define it to what we think it is, to what our traditions are. We're like, hey, you know, church is, you need to come to my service and you need to tithe. No, let Christ define the church. Let the word of God define the church. And I have to face the scriptures. And when I read the scriptures, I'm faced with the reality that that most of the way that I was doing ministry, most of the way that we do ministry in the Western church doesn't line up with what I see in scripture, with the way that there's a way that God has completely outlined and described what his church is. And it's just time for us to submit to him. It's time for us to be disciples. And it's time for us to let him define us and define the church. Amen? Amen. Well, I, don't, I, I could keep going and I, I don't want to, uh, um, I don't want to stay on here much longer. Um, But I just pray that this is encouraging to you. It's time for us to submit to God. Guys, there's a sweet joy in in surrender. There's a sweetness in submission to him and to let your your mind go and just be, you know what? I don't know. I literally don't know. Uh, I don't know how to do Christianity. I don't know how to follow. I don't know how to do all this stuff. I'm going to learn. I'm going to be a learner. I want to just follow Jesus. I don't have all the answers. I don't know how to do ministry really well. I don't know uh, all the stuff. I don't really necessarily know what revival is, but I want to. I'm going to follow Jesus, and I'm going to learn from him, and I'm going to take his yoke upon me and uh, and literally bear his yoke, uh, which is humility and meekness, and let him define what it means for me to be his follower, what it means for me to be his disciple. And uh, just walk that path and follow him uh, with all our hearts and all of our, uh, just everything, all of our soul, all of our strength, every part of us. So I love you guys. I bless you. And uh, let me just pray for you really quick uh, before I get off here. 
God, I just thank you for everybody that's been watching. I thank you just for um, this word, Lord. I thank you for your heart and, uh, for us, that you are our husband, man. You are our bridegroom, that you are our king and our Lord, that you love us, that you long for us, that you, you so desire for us to be your beautiful bride and your glorified church, the beauty that we are, for us to see it and to, for us to step into it, for us to truly be your disciples, to learn, to hear your voice, and to be led by your voice, to be submitted to you as our head. Um, God, we know that this is your desire. We know that this is your uh, the calling for each and every one of us to be yielded and submitted to you uh, as disciples, as followers, as daughters and sons, as believers in Jesus, that this is the way through. This is the way forward. This is the way that we, we this is the means. This is Christianity is just to be a lifelong learner and follower of you. So we submit to you afresh, God. We submit to you and we repent, God, for our pride. I repent for my pride. I repent for arrogance. I repent for my presumption. I repent for, for not submitting my life to you, for not letting you be the leader, for not letting you be the head, for thinking that I know best, for thinking that all, all the books I've read or the stuff I've learned and been filled with, that that knows best. And I just submit afresh to you and say, you are my king, you are my Lord, and I submit to you and I just give you my life, all my life, Jesus. It's all yours. Amen. 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 Well, I bless you. I hope that this encouraged you and it was no means meant to uh, condemn or uh, just, you know, tear anybody down. I love the church. I love the bride. This is just, it's time for us, guys. It's, it's time for us to submit to Jesus as the head and uh, just go on this journey together to be a disciple and a learner of Jesus and uh, see God do great things and amazing things as he leads and shepherds the church. Love you guys and uh, appreciate you. Uh, two things, if you would just share the video, if this has blessed you, I'd love other people to be encouraged uh, by this message about submitting to Christ and uh, would just really appreciate that if you'd share it, get it out. Other people can be blessed. And then also, if you would like to sow into uh, Love Pursuit International financially, uh, it would be amazing. It's good soil. We just are um, just lifting up the gospel, lifting up Jesus everywhere we go and everything that we do. That's our endeavor. That's our mission. And uh, if you'd like to do that, you can do so at lovepursuitinternational.com at the donate button. Again, lovepursuitinternational.com at the donate button. And I appreciate your support and I just am thankful for you. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Many blessings. Take care. <laughs>